Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome back to Wizards News. Today we're going to talk about dragons! Yes, we're finally getting them in all of the world, and we have Dragon's Day coming up this Saturday. So we're going to look at Dragon's Day as well as we're going to look at some port key research. So let's dive in. Now, Dragon's Day is coming up the day after tomorrow, or if you're watching this later, I guess it'll be coming out tomorrow. So uh, um, you need to know when it's coming out, and there's a lot of information about things going on in Dragon's Day, because there are a lot of weird things happening in Dragon's Day, and I really want to clear that all up, and hopefully we can make this uh, simple and easy to understand for most people. Now today, most people got this email, and this is the, the information about Dragon's Day, but as you can see, it's a, it's a really... Um, short email. Uh, so there really isn't much in here other than the time and uh, thanks for everything that happened at FanFest. So yes, now we can move on. But there's a little link down here we can go to the blog and see more information on that. This then brings us over to the blog where there is more detailed information. This is kind of the wrap up from FanFest and what all we achieved from it. Where all of the dragons will be going for the regions and what all we'll be getting from this. And even though this has a lot of information in it, it's kind of hard to read and there's a few things in here that have made it a little bit mixed up. But the one thing I do want to point out in here are the rewards down here. So we have a 25% increase in XP bonus. We have half portmanteau walking distance. We have half potions brewing time. And we have two times dark detectors. So I hope you've been enjoying those. Those started earlier this week, and they will be going through the 9th. Uh, so the 9th, they will be stopping. So uh, get all this while you can, especially the port keys right now. That is, it's a lot of fun to be walking out a 10K in 5 kilometers. Or now 2Ks are becoming 1 kilometer keys. Uh, so this is, this is a great way to get a lot very quickly, um, rank up, and get all these other things that you normally have to walk a lot farther to get. Also, I've been taking big advantage of the dark detectors. That is one of the fastest ways to rank up. You can set out your dark detectors and get far better spawns. Uh, they'll give you more XP per average. And I have a whole video on how to use dark detectors if you want to see that as well. And then I've been doing a lot with the half brewing time. And so I've been uh, maxing out my vault trying to get all the potions brewed that I can. So all of this is happening all week long. It's not exactly tied to Dragon's Day, but it will be going through Dragon's Day and up until the 9th. So I was planning on talking about Dragon's Day through this and going line by line, but this isn't quite as easy to remember. And then the Orange Wizard popped up this. And if you're not following the Orange Wizard, you probably should. They're on Instagram, and they have some of the best graphics out there. The infographics are incredible. And this has all the information in one place, and it is really, really well laid out. So let's go through this and actually talk through. Here you can see the main regions where dragons will be from here on out. So if you are in America, you will get the Peruvian Viper Tooth. If you are in Africa or Europe, you'll be getting the Welsh Green. If you are in Asia, Russia, India, all of that, you'll be getting the Chinese Fireball. That's a big area for the Chinese Fireball. And then if you are in Oceania, you'll be getting the Antilopian Opali. So these will start appearing on Dragon's Day at your specific time. And the timelines are if you are in Asia Pacific, you'll be getting uh, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. A East time. In Europe, you'll be getting 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. GMT. And in the Americas and Greenland, you'll be getting at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So set your clocks to where your time zone is and get ready for when Dragon's Day starts because you'll have the first access at these four dragons that you have in your zone. Then we can come down a little bit farther and during Dragon's Day, right off the bat, you're going to be getting a complimentary grift. 10 scrolls, okay. 25 energy, that's nice. 5 red books. Ooh. Okay, yes, this is cool. Um, so this is the, they're, they're starting to occasionally do this as bonuses, and we, we do get them um, during the, the calendar. There is one item in there where you're going to be getting some more red books. Here's another chance where you can get some more red books. So if you're trying to bump up in your skills tree, yeah, they're going to help you out here. That's kind of exciting. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, yeah, red books. Then next, we will also be getting a second dragon during Dragon's Day. And this was dependent upon how many port keys your region picked up. And most every region out there picked up more of the Chinese fireballs than anything else. So everyone is getting the Chinese fireball as their second dragon, with the exception of Asia, because that is their already that regular dragon. They'll be getting the Antilopian Opali. So if you are in Asia or the Pacific, you will be getting access to both the Chinese Fireball and the Antilopian Opali. And those of you over there will be able to prestige your page at least once, provided that you already had the eggs needed for it. 
The rest of us in the world are going to be splitting up our dragons over two pages, so we won't be able to prestige any page this time, but I'm assuming that they'll be putting out dragons for other events and other things in the future. If you are in Africa or Europe, you will have the Commonwealth screen as your regular, and then you'll be getting the Chinese fireball as well. If you are in America or the Greenlands, you will regularly be having the Peruvian Viper Tooth, but then you'll also be getting the Chinese Fireball during Dragon's Day. So during that three-hour window of Dragon's Day, you will have a chance to catch both of the dragons, and you want to get as many as you can because you're not going to get a greater chance after this. On top of that, you're going to want to make sure you have your Brufio's Brain Elixir going. And even if you prestige your page and max out the stamps, you're probably going to want to still keep getting dragons because they are worth a lot of XP. The Peruvian Viper Tooth and the Chinese Fireball are both emergency foundables. The Commonwealth Green and Antelope and Opali, those are severe foundables. So for me, in the Americas, I'm going to be getting the Peruvian Viper Tooth and the Chinese Fireball. And that means that every dragon that I return, I'm going to be getting 500 XP base. So if I use the Beruvio's Brain Elixir, I'm going to be getting 1,000 XP base. And so if these are popping up as much as they are, you might be able to get an incredible amount of XP. And I, some people have been saying that if the spawns are as high as they're expecting, you might be able to get 100,000 plus in that time window and maybe even a little bit more because they're pretty much a guaranteed catch they're an oddity so you just are tracing the challenge bolt you're not actually trying to catch them so you can get a lot of these very quickly and that means if you time it out right and you have your Brufio's brain elixir going you can get a lot of XP and possibly level up once or twice so that's most of the dragons for Dragon's Day, but the other thing that's also going to be starting is down here there are five new foundables that will be regularly appearing. And these will be happening under the Hogwarts School, the nine and three quarter. So these will be the new page all the way at the bottom with the moving staircase, and they're all hanging up there. If you went to FanFest, you would have gotten all four of the founders already, and you'd just be needing the wild boar. If you didn't go to FanFest, now all four of the founders will be appearing in the wild, and here you can see the trace that you'll be getting with them. Godric Gryffindor, you're going to need Aguamente. Helga Hufflepuff and Rowena Ravenclaw, you're going to need the Obublio. And then for Salazar Slytherin, you're going to need the Bombarda. And then the last one over here with the wild boar, that's the weird one hanging on the wall, you'll be able to get this in fortresses. So this will be a challenge foundable. Whenever you use the nine and three quarters symbol, you'll have a chance to get that. The whole Dragon's Day is going to be an incredible amount of fun with the chance of getting an immense amount of XP as well as getting dragons that you've never seen before and filling up your page as much as you can. I do suggest you fill up your page entirely with all the dragons you possibly can because you never know which dragon you're going to have access to next time they decide to do an event with dragons. Otherwise, if you're the lucky person who gets to travel around the world, then you might have the chance to catch other dragons when you go to other regions. Now, for Dragon's Day itself, there are a couple different things you can do. Number one, you can go to a park and play around and hope you find other people. Um, but if you're in a park, you're going to be with other spawns. And sometimes the parks don't have the best spawns. You're looking for the areas that have the most spawns available. And for me, that's actually parking lots in the shopping centers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a little bit of a community day. I'm inviting everyone from my community to come and meet me at a shopping center. And then everyone's going to pile into my van and we're going to do the shopping center hop. So I probably won't get quite as many because I'm driving, but I'll be able to stop, park, catch, and move on. Uh, but everyone else in the van gets a, a free ride around the parking lot and catches many dragons as they possibly can at the time. This way you get the community aspect, everyone going around. You're doing the parking lot hop, so you're going to be seeing the most possible dragons out there, and everyone can get the most that they possibly can get in the time allotted. So if you have a group in your area and you can set up with a, a van ride to go around and do this, that's really kind of one of the best strategies out there. Otherwise, if you don't have that, then try and find a place that has a lot of regular spawns and go there, and that's probably going to be your best chance of grinding out dragons. So that's what's happening with Dragon's Day, but there is one more thing I want to talk about today. And as we know, it would not be a Wizards News video without a spreadsheet. And now I'm starting to do research on getting port keys with just one Raxpert. So I'm going to need your help out there. I, I've started collecting it, and I've got a bunch more to put in here. And what I want to see is if you pick one Raxpert and then back out, are you going to get a different reward set than if you picked all five Raxperts? Is it more important to pick all five Raxperts, or is it worth it just to pick one Raxpert and leave to save some time? Theoretically, I'm assuming the two of them to be the same, but I don't know, and I really want to research this so we know for sure. Now, there's two different ways of collecting this information. Number one, you can go in and take a screenshot of your current XP, and then you can go into the registry, and you can take a screenshot of each of the families so you know what family XP you have in all of them. And then you can go over to your potions, and you can take a picture of all of your potions so you know all the potions you currently have. 
Then you go into one port key, you tick, click one rack part, you back out, and you take a picture of all those again to see what you've gotten. That's a lot of work. Now, there is another way that a lot of people have been telling me about, and I've been playing with it, and it works fairly well. And for this, all you have to do is go in and click one rack spurt. And rather than backing out and leaving immediately, you actually want to exit the game. So I will swipe up on my phone and eliminate the game, and then I will restart the game. And as soon as you restart the game, it will pop up with all of the rewards you got from that port key. So you'll know exactly what you have. And you can just take a screenshot of that, save it for later, and we'll be putting that into the spreadsheet. Now there's also going to be a couple other pieces of information I have that aren't on that picture. So when you take that picture, also make sure you include these other items. Number one, which rack spurt did you click? Number two, what location were you in? And then number three, did you have Barufio's Brain Elixir running at the same time? And if you want to use this spreadsheet to collect your information, I'll leave a link to it down below. And this is fairly easy to fill out. You have number one, what rack spurt did you click? So you can look at the maps. I'll have a link to those down below. Find the rack spurt you clicked on the map. It has a letter. And then you're going to enter in the items. Now, you see there's a slot for five because you possibly can get up to five items. But sometimes you're only going to get one, two, three, or four items. So fill in all of the items you got. I, I don't need to know what type of potion ingredient you got or what particular family XP you got. Just put them in here with P for potion ingredient, F for family XP, and then X for regular XP, and then you can total them all up over here. The reason I want to separate them out is it just makes it a little bit easier to track so we kind of get an idea of, okay, there are four items in here, so one was doubled up, and that one was the family XP. Once I collect enough of this data, then I can compare it to the spreadsheets I have for regular port keys, and we can know definitively is there a difference between clicking one rack spurt and clicking all five rack spurts. Then once you get the data, send me an email. My email address is listed down below as well. Either you can list it all out on the email itself, or you can take this spreadsheet and put in all of your information in here and then send the spreadsheet back to me, and I'll be able to add it into the master spreadsheet. If everyone in here will do this with one port key, we will have all the information we need. So the more you can give out, the better. And as soon as I get all this information collated, I'll be putting out a video explaining what is the difference between one rack spurt and all five rack spurts. So this video has had a lot of different information, and I hope you like that. Um, if you did have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, let me know down in the comments. I do read all the comments, and I try and answer as many as I possibly can. If you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. <laughs> you know all those fun things by now. They really do mean a lot to me, and thank you for that. So I think that's about it for today, and until next time, have a magical day. Okay, it's time for the chocolate creature. I only have uh, two of these left, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that. But these are kind of fun because uh, you get several things out. So I might actually go buy a few more of those. And today we got, ooh, another Acromantula. I might have to send this out to someone because now I have two. And then for our chocolate creature in the chocolate, we have another Thestral. This one won't last long because I'm probably going to eat it.